Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, for our webinar on, on paged and complex content in Islandor 8 um, with a, a side order of versioning. I'm going to turn it over to Danny Lamb, our technical lead here at the Islandor Foundation. I'm Melissa Nez, the project and community manager. And uh, this will be recorded and shared afterwards on our YouTube channel. So I'll send out an email with any relevant recordings, any links that come up over the course of the session. So you'll get all that information afterwards. And we will have a question period once Danny's done presenting where you can uh, ask your questions out loud or type them into the chat and I'll read them out. And we'll save some time for that at the end. Thanks everyone. All right, Danny, you have at it. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again, everyone, for, for showing up, for taking the time to, to come check us out. Um, so I will be walking through paged uh, and complex content in Islandora 8, although maybe a, a better word would be sequenced content, um, or just um, when you need more than one kind of repository item in order to describe something. So we'll be talking about that. I'll, I'll walk through... Uh, the slides and we'll give some kind of overview information about everything and then we'll also uh, hop into a, a, a Development box that I've got going right now And so we'll, we will actually do some demos and some some walkthroughs of all of this so you can see how it all works firsthand um, And of course we will be recording this so um, You might be watching this later on YouTube. So thanks for watching if, if that's you um, All right, so Kind of our motivation behind uh, doing this, I think, was uh, pretty clear and pretty straightforward from the Foundation's perspective. So we'll start off with a quote. Uh, this quote is, I can't use Islandora 8 until it supports page content, um, which was said by basically everyone. And we know that because uh, we actually gave out a community survey. And in the survey, we asked three questions. Um, you know, what what do you absolutely need before you can move to Islandora 8? What do you not care about at all for Islandora 8? And what features are nice to have and, and but not critical? And so out of 76 responses to the, the survey, um, page content was the top. We got 66 um, yays out of, out of 76 for page content, which is uh, pretty striking. Um, so we made it a point to prioritize uh, page content uh, and be sure that we can ship with it for the next release. So uh, after that happened, we've uh, kind of started cranking the gears for a community sprint, and the community really stepped forward and, and made all of this um, happen. Um, in fact, the community did more than just make page content happen, but um, we're in a testing sprint right now, so we're seeing how some things shape up, but we're potentially shipping with five out of the 10 top features that came um, from that survey. So we will be shipping with page content and OIIPMH, OCR, um, versioning, and hopefully potentially some search and discovery improvements. Um, is some kind of quality of life type things when you spin up a new box, uh, just having your good default set up for, for searching and fastening. Um, so, okay, so let's talk about modeling page content in Islandora 8. Um, there are three new content models that we have uh, for these. So we have one that's um, called page content. That's for like the uh, parent object, so to speak. Um, so if you're modeling a book, um, the page content model is, is the book itself. Um, it's individual pages that you have images of. Those would get assigned a, a page content model. And then uh, we also have a publication issue, which is there and available to use, but we're not really doing much uh, with it yet. Uh, but a publication issue would be like um, just bubble it up another level, and it would just be a sequence of page content objects. So if page content is a sequence of pages, then publication issue is a sequence of page content. Um, and I've already kind of tipped my hat. I use the word sequence. Um, what really uh, sets page content apart from other type of content that you can model in Islandor 8 is the ordering. The ordering is the key. Um, so if you have a collection, it will have children. The children themselves will have uh, many files. 
And the relationships that we use are from PCDM. So files are a file of something, and then the children are a member of the collection. And those relationships all still hold um, in page content. The only difference is really that the children are numbered and we know what the proper sequence is. So in a collection, everything's just kind of generally unordered and in page content, it's ordered. And that's really the only thing that makes something page content. Um, we have these models that you can assign, page content and page, but we really just use those as kind of labels and we can react accordingly to them. So um, you could certainly create other ordered content, but just add other models and have other behavior around them. You know, tagging something as a page or page content is important so the system knows like what derivatives to make, but the key essence of what makes it here is, is that it is ordered. Um, and we do this with a weight field. So um, if you leave the weight field empty, so our default forms now all have a weight on them kind of down at the bottom uh, in the system section, right kind of underneath the drop down when you would pick the model and we'll see it very soon. Um, but if you leave the weight field empty, uh, it doesn't have a weight of zero or anything like that. Um, it just, it's just null value. It's considered unordered at that point. You have an unordered child. When you give it a weight, then it becomes an ordered child and you're only allowed to give it positive values. So you can't have, um, this isn't like programmers where everything starts with zero um, and you can't have like a negative one weight to something to like, you know, take something after the fact and kind of retroactively bump it to the top of the list. Um, you can't do anything like that. So it's kind of real world numbers here, right? There's one page, two pages, three pages, et cetera. Um, and, and by default, weight is represented by uh, a predicate, it's CO index, that's the collections ontology from Perl.org. Um, and this index predicate is, you know, basically specifically meant for an ordered collection, or in our case, we're using it for page content. Um, reordering, uh, I imagine as soon as I say that order is done by just uh, manually setting it in the form, you're going to say, well, what happens when I need to reorder a page? I am not about to go change one weight somewhere and then literally bubble down uh, the weight for the next like 100 pages after it or something like that. And so we're cognizant of that. And so there is a UI for that. So uh, you at least can go, and we'll show you this page as well. Um, for anything with uh, children, um, you can get a nice drag and drop table, and you can reorder them to your heart's content, save it, and then it will take care of assigning all of the weights for you automatically. Um, so a very interesting uh, aspect of how we chose to implement page content uh, is that we decided to uh, focus and settle around a standard. The standard that we chose to settle on was uh, triple IF. Um, and so specifically, we're using triple IF manifests. Um, so this is all set up for you by default, but it is quite configurable and you, you really do have a lot of power here. Um, but by default, it is available at a nodes page, and then you just put slash manifest at the end. So that percent sign has, is, just means the ID of the node. Um, it is configurable at this URL here. I'm giving you uh, admin structure views view triple IF manifest. And so if you can't tell from that URL, yes, this is, this is a view. Um, because it is a view, it means that you can go through a user interface and you can configure a query that selects the set of images that you want to be in the manifest. Um, and this was contributed by Joe Curl from, from Kent State, so many thanks to him and, and the crew there for, for contributing this to us during the sprint. Um, but as you can imagine, uh, let me just say, by default, what you get is uh, it looks for, if you're on an object, the query looks for all of its children, and it tries to find the service files for all of the children. And that's what it will, will get you. Um, 
you could very easily change that to something else. So you could have it snag like all of the thumbnails for all of the children. If you wanted to make like a grid out of uh, everything in a collection or something like that, you're not restricted to just things that are tagged for page content. Um, you can you can literally kind of adapt this query however you want and then use it to generate these manifests um, essentially on the fly. So it's pretty awesome. This was something that we did not um, intend to do from the, from the outset, um, but now Islandora 8 um, really generates all of the compatible information that you need for, for Triple IF um, presentation, uh, which gives us a lot of options when it comes to uh, rendering the, the page content. Um, so right now what we're using is a multi-page OpenSea Dragon uh, viewer in order to see page content. Um, it's placeable as a block, which means that you can kind of put it wherever you want. And what you have to do is you have to um, basically feed it a manifest. It needs to know where the IIIF manifest is, and then when the page loads, it will go, it will pull down the manifest, it will parse it, and then it will uh, generate the viewer for you. Um, the viewer settings themselves are available uh, at admin config, media, open C Dragon, and so it's uh, quite a long configuration page slash form. Uh, there is a lot that you can do, but we will kind of walk through some of the common things that you want to do. Um, by default, you get this thing called sequence mode. That's the picture that you see there. Um, it has each individual page and then with arrows that you can use to, to toggle between them. Um, you can have it show all of the pages at once in a strip. That's called collection mode. Um, and then you can also create this neato little reference strip at the bottom, kind of looks like a, a reel of film, um, and it just shows you a preview of all of the pages. So if you want to use sequence mode, then that's still kind of a way you can you can see to, to have better navigation. Um, but because we are using IIIF manifests here, um, the work to read those manifests we added, those weren't inherently part of OpenSea Dragon, but we were already using OpenSea Dragon to display tips, so we said, why don't we just add that? Um, but because we are using IIIF manifests, it means that we have a lot more options available to us, or at least those options um, will slide into the software more easily. So uh, we wrote a little shim to kind of bridge the gap between IIIF manifests and OpenSea Dragon because it doesn't natively um, work with the presentation API in IIIF. But there are other viewers like the Welcome Viewer or Mirador um, that already have the ability to work with IIIF manifests, and we have experimented with that some. So there is a PR from Eli Zoller at, at Arizona State um, for Mirador, uh, and we are um, certainly open to uh, implementing other viewers if folks in the community find it, find that they need it or that it has features that, that we think would be really good to give out to everyone. Um, with page content, I guess in addition to viewing, kind of the next big thing uh, is that you want to be able to search it. And so in order to search it, um, you need to know what's inside it. And so in order to do that, we implemented OCR derivatives. Um, so this is a very interesting um, aspect of Islandora 8. If you trace this back all the way to the very beginning, and I mean the absolute beginning, back when we were still on Drupal 7 and using Fedora 4, um, the microservice to extract text was one of the first pieces that we built of Islandora 8. It may have even been the first. Um, it was basically uh, the, the Drupal module for Islandora 7, uh, and then the microservice to generate OCR derivatives. That was like the first thing that we did. And it sat there unused for quite a long time until Alan Stanley from UPI uh, came and kind of wired everything together for us. Um, so it's nice to see this come to fruition, kind of a long game uh, that we played with this microservice, but, but it is now fully implemented and integrated into Islandora 8. So, um, and again, all of this is very configurable. Islandora 8 is very configurable. Um, so you're not locked into anything here, but by default, what happens is that uh, all um, resources that are tagged as a page, um, they get an extracted text derivative, and extracted text um, 
so basically, you ingest a page. It gets accepted into the system. It goes into Fedora. After that, an event fires. And we pass the TIFF off um, to, to the OCR engine. And it generates the OCR and then returns the results. When we get the results, um, those are actually stored as you know a data stream on the object so that you have the full text file there. But then what we do uh, is we also take the contents of the file, and we put that in a field on the media. So we have this uh, quote unquote edited text field, and I guess it's called that because it's it's assumed you're going to probably want to clean it up at some point in time. Um, OCR is mm -hmm. is good, but it is not the magic bullet that understands how to you know extract text from everything, no matter the arrangement or handwriting or whatever. There's always some stuff that you got to do to kind of kind of touch it up, right? So we're calling it the edited text field. But because all of the contents of the file are placed in this field, then the field can be indexed in Solar, and that means that you can you can search and find it. Um, and we'll I'll step you through that whole process. Like I said, we were going to ship with some um, search and discovery enhancements. Um, and so by default now, we don't have that enhancement. So I'll show you how you actually would set up this field to get indexed in Solar, um, and we'll walk through all of that. And it lets you use some pretty neato Drupal tricks there. There's some pretty powerful stuff. Um, so uh, I'll show it to you here in a minute. Um, and I guess, so the last kind of overview thing before we just hop right in um, is versioning. So this is, we did the survey, um, and on the survey of the top 10 um, features, version kind of came in a little low. We were concerned about that because it seems like, you know, since we're doing software for preservation, that this would probably be pretty high up there in terms of, of priority. Um, and although it was uh, lower on the list, it was high enough priority for some folks, uh, particularly Arizona State. And so they uh, basically assigned Eli to, to work on it. And so out of all of his hard work and effort, we did get versioning, um, which was a pretty large change uh, that had to go all the way through the stack. So it's an impressive little chunk of work. Um, but in the end, the output of it is basically invisible. Um, you're not really going to notice that it's working, but it is working. Um, so it's there all the time. You shouldn't have to do anything different, really. Um, so what happens is in Drupal, there is a concept of a revision as you're writing content, like say a blog post, you want to maybe go through multiple revisions of it. And in your workflow, you know, your editor would sign off on it and then it would, it would go in and get published. So they have that concept. It's not the exact same concept as in Fedora, um, but it still is generally the same thing. All right. But so there's Drupal revisions. And then what we do is we just, every time you make a revision in Drupal, we make a version in Fedora. Um, and this is all just done behind the scenes. So you don't see it. Revisions can be reverted to. So if you revert through the UI, um, in Drupal, you can get your content back to before when you mess it up. Um, and when it does that, it doesn't roll back time. You're not rewinding history, so to speak. Um, it creates a new revision on top of it, and that, that, that goes to the top of the stack. So um, even when you revert, you still have the full history of everything that happens. Um, and when you go check out these versions in Fedora, um, they'll be essentially the same thing, they'll contain the same information, but just the way that they're modeled and retrieved is adherent to the, to the Memento specification. And, and essentially when I say that, what I'm really saying is um, when you request a version from Fedora, you could be like, hey, give me version one or version two, right? And if you know that you're in like the seventh version, you can, you can go get that or you can go get the version by name or something. Um, but what it really, the power of the Memento specification is what it lets you do is it let you say, hey, uh, on, you know, August 21st, 2019, um, what was the state of this document at that time? And so you can give it just a date and it will like uh, figure it out and it will pop out the 
correct version at that point in time. So you can see the version of C, the state of something um, at an arbitrary date. You can even feed it a range of dates and it will give you every version that meets the criteria. Um, so if you give it a range and there was like four versions within that, it would, it would feed back all four of them to you, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'll show you how to enable or disable this by default. This, all of this is enabled. So you get essentially auto versioning. Um, every time you go make a change, that's going to make a revision in Drupal, and then that's going to flow through into a version in Fedora. And this is all controlled through the Drupal front end, so I can show you um, where the little tick box is. And so, like, by default, it's always going to slice a new revision every time um, you save, but you can, you can turn that off and, and have it by default not be checked, and, and you are in control of when you slice those revisions. Um, Okay, all right. So, uh, keeping my eye on the clock here, I think we're at uh, we're going at a pretty good clip, um, and we should have enough time to kind of step through all the stuff to demo, um, and then uh, have time to to answer questions. So, I'm going to hop out of the presentation. I'm going to hop into a Vagrant environment. Um, this is the release candidate that we sliced for the testing sprint uh, that I am I'm at here too. Let me. Oh. Let's do this instead. Okay. And then let's kill that zoom here. All right. So here is an Islandora 8. Um, I have ingested some content just to make sure that all of this worked um, before the demo, but we're going to go ingest some more. So I, I have created a book. Um, this book, I have given it a handful of pages already. And so we're, we're sort of at the defaults here. Uh, we have this sequence mode here, so I can tab through the existing pages. These are all just sort of random TIFFs. Um, so this is like an invoice, a schematic, and then um, a letter explaining what a fax machine does, dated 1972. Um, so they're all still there. You can zoom in and out, and we get everything we like from the Open Sea Dragon viewer and everything. Um, and you can go through the pages. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to add a fourth page just to show you how that works, and then reorder them, and and we'll kind of step through all the things that I, I gave an overview of. So for any book, um, you want to go to its children. These are essentially its pages. Um, and in here, we can click on this Add Child button. So from the Children tab, you say Add Child. And then it's just going to walk you through the same steps as if you were making um, any other repository item here. So we're going to tell it that's the content type we want. I'm going to give it a title of fourth page. Um, and I'm just for the sake of brevity, even though our form um, by default a little long. It gives you everything you need if you were migrating in from mods, which is what most of the Islandor 7x crowd has. Um, but just for brevity, we're going to kind of go through all this very quickly. Um, I'm going to leave that all empty. And I'm just going to say that here, I give it a title. I'm giving it a model of page. You can see it's automatically set to do the member of, so we don't want to mess with that. Um, and then at the bottom here, you can set the weight. So I can go punch in whatever I want, but I got these these arrows here I can work with. You see it starts at one, um, and it doesn't let you go any lower, so you can have any zero or negative index pages. Um, but we're going to say that this is page four. We're just putting it straight at the end. And we're going to save. This is a local box here, so I'll give it a second while it, it churns. So we've created the page. The page at this point is just a stub. It's holding metadata. If I wanted to go in and write a description or something or give it some other page level metadata, I could go and do that through the form. Um, but we're just kind of leaving it empty here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it its original file. I'm going to upload the actual file that it supposedly describes here. Um, so, and again, this is the same process that we go through for other repository items as well. It's the exact same thing. You go to Media tab. It lists what media there are. Right now, we have none. We're going to add one. And a weird Drupalism here. Um, you choose what type of media to add. And for the most part, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's 
images, video, audio, right? Some other ones we made that are special here. And then there's this file one, which is kind of like a, um, our generic binaries, so to speak, from 7x, um, or just anything that doesn't fit. A weird Drupalism here is that, according to Drupal, a TIFF is not an image. Um, an image is, quote unquote, anything that you can like render within the browser natively. So uh, a, a GIF, a PNG, a JPEG. Um, according to Drupal, a TIFF is a file. So we just have to say, we're going to add a file. I'm going to go, I'm going to give it the TIFF. I don't think you can see um, the dialogue here I'm working with to upload this file, but I'm just going to upload the fourth in these series of random TIFFs that I have. And I'm just going to name it fourth page original file. And the key thing here is that when you upload the content, you need to give it a use. Here we're saying it's original file. Again, everything is extremely configurable in Islandora 8, but by default, when you tag something as an original file, that's like saying, um, hey, please make derivatives. That's basically what the system is set up to look for by default. Um, you could, you know, you can upload your own and put your own things in here and change up that logic all you want through the UI. Uh, that's kind of another, another story, another demo. Um, but we're just going to make this an original file, so it's going to kick off the, all the derivatives, and we're going to save. So it's going to go, and it's it's passing that TIFF into Fedora right now. Um, so it accepted the file. We have this file now. Um, you can see sort of all of the media that I've generated here so far. Um, but let's go. OK, we are here. Let's go and check this one out. So here, you're just going to see, because it's a TIFF, it doesn't really know what to do with it. It's just going to give us this download link. Um, but it says, hey, I'm a media of this fourth page. So let's just go to this fourth page. And so here, you can see we've already got derivatives going. So even though it's a TIFF, it's already extracted um, a JPEG for you to view. Um, and you can see this one here is in French. Um, but if we go to the media of this page, you'll see all the derivatives that get generated. Sometimes this takes some time because it all happens in the background. So we're still working on some other stuff here. Uh, so we've got the file we originally uploaded. It made a service file, it made a thumbnail. So you can see we got a small version of this page that you can check out. And it's also extracting the text um, and it's generating fits. And those can kind of take a while. So let's see, I'll reload here to see if they've made it. Um, all right. We'll just give it a minute there. It'll do its thing. Um, <clears throat> so we can go back to the to the book itself. Go to view here. So we can go back to the page. Or excuse me, back to the book. So it's going to load. And if everything went correctly, the fourth page will be our French. There it is. Um, so if you go through and add pages, you can set up the order. When you go do it, Open Sea Dragon is going to immediately respond. Um, it, it aggressively caches itself, but it knows once you add a new page, OK, I need to go pull in this page and get everything there. Um, so let's see, we're going to look. Here are the children. You can see it's included here. I'm going to go to the reorder children page just to show you guys uh, an example of that. So we have them in this in this sequence here: test page, another page, yet another page, fourth page. Um, I got some real clever naming going on. So I'm just going to completely reverse the order and hit save. Um, now this is a, you know a very small uh set of pages to work with here but this will work if you have you know hundreds and hundreds of pages um it will work you can set um the items per page and it's smart enough to know when you're working with stuff that kind of crosses the boundaries if you're dealing with you know 99 100 and 101 um it's it's pretty smart and it knows how to handle all of that so it will scale up to to what you're trying to do here um so let's go back to the book and now you can see our French is first. And we kind of go through uh, the order here is the diagram.
and then and then the original page. So everything can be done that way. Um, let's see if maybe we're done generating those derivatives. If not, I know that these are still there, so we can we can always work with those. But let's go back to our fourth page. Okay, so our derivatives have have finished in the background. Um, so you can see what we had originally here before the the file that was uploaded, the service file that gets created, the thumbnail. We've also extracted the text, and we've also got fits. Um, and just real quick, I don't want to delve into this, but if you if you do go visit fits, you do get this very nice um, table that shows you uh, everything there about it, all the technical metadata that got extracted, which is pretty fancy. But here we're here to talk about OCR and extracted text. So you check this out. You can see here's the edited text here. It pulls it out and it actually even pulls out the page number, uh, funnily enough. Um, and even though I'm not really sent to French, it does a pretty good job of pulling everything out. This OCR is based on um, Tesseract, which does pretty good if you give it um, text in the right layout. And this really was the right layout. Um, so if we if we go here, you can actually look at our at our file. Here's the actual file that gets uh, generated, and you can see it's got some funky characters and stuff. It doesn't really know how to. Um, how to handle the accents and stuff in French. Um, but so that's all there. That's in your repository. You can do what you want with this text file. Uh, save it. Say this is what it was after OCR and then clean it up and then you can have your, your edited text be somewhat different here. Um, but it's all there. But because it's in this field here called edited text, now we can, in theory, search for it. Um, so it's not set up to do this now, but let's go ahead and set this up then. Um, it's pretty straightforward um, to do, although it, it just, you need to have that little kind of piece of knowledge first to know exactly where you're going. And once you see it, then then it's pretty easy to set up here. Um, so just, just to prove my point here, by default, what gets set up in searching is very, very basic, very minimal. Essentially, you get the title of what you uploaded, who uploaded it, and kind of the time and date where they were uploaded. That's really all you get. So you can't search for a whole lot. Um, so I can search this page itself. What did we name it? Fourth page. So if I search for something like fourth page, I should get the results. So here we can even just say fourth. It should figure it out, right? Fourth page. But if we search for any of the content contained therein, uh, it's it's not really going to like it here. So I'm going to say this this order order. My French is not the best. Um, if we search for this, of course, it's not there because we haven't indexed it yet. So it's just it's going to give us nothing. Um, so let's set that up. We go to configuration. We can go to search in metadata here. There's this search in API. This is where you set up all of your solar indexing and stuff in Islandora 8. It's a little different than in Islandora 7. There is no transforms or XSLTs or any of that um, stuff that you need to know. You've got it all kind of done through a, through a user interface here. Um, so by default, you get set up with a solar server and you create one index and you're pointed at that index. So we're gonna click on it and it's gonna tell us what we've got. So here's the deal. So because the text that got extracted gets pulled out and then placed onto the media itself, it's not actually placed onto the page. Um, so in order to create a solar document that has that for the page, that when you search, you get drawn to the right page, um, you need to just click this one text box. So this is what I was saying. This is this one key bit of knowledge you need to know. If you go to processors here, there's some configuration. You can click on this one. It says reverse entity references. So you want this. So everything in Islandora, if I go back to that, that slide that shows you how we set up like page content versus a collection, you saw all those arrows went from the bottom up. It means like that media reference what uh, repository item they belong to and repository items kind of reference like what collection they're in or what page content they're in. So they, it always points up. It goes from, from child to parent up the tree. Um, by enabling this, it lets us have access to all of the stuff uh, that references 
the thing we're searching for. And so we could put all of this into the solar document. So I'm just going to save this. And what this does is that now for any repository item out there, when I'm creating what I want to be able to search on, I can actually search on the things contained in the media that it owns and the medias that reference it. So here we're going to go to fields. And so instead of creating an XSLT that splits apart, you know, mods XML and then creates this uh, XML solar doc and gets fed in. Instead here, it's all based on the relational database and all the fields in Drupal. So you got a UI that you can go through and do everything. And so here I showed you, I was telling you before, you don't really get a whole lot um, created, author, change date, stuff like that, title, um, that's it. So we're gonna add for our content, um, we're gonna, here, go to add field. And then what's going to be available here, if we keep going, you're gonna see this really ugly bit here, yeah. They say reverse reference and blah, 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 the HTML is still in them. Um, but here you can see this one that says media and it follows the media of relationship. So if you drill down to this bad boy right here and click, gets a little wonky here, but we gotta get back to it. Um, it will expand and now everything that's available on all the media, you can now add to the solar docs. So for the, for the node itself. So I'm gonna keep going down and we're gonna look for the edited text right here. So we're just gonna add it. I'm gonna say done. Okay, we're gonna come here. We can see it's got that uh, onerous title there. We're just gonna call this edited text. Um, and so you can see it's all, it's all here for us to work with. We're just gonna say save. And then uh, the thing you gotta do here at this point is just now you need to re-index your solar. Um, again, uh, there's just all this is done through the UI. So I'm just gonna tell it to re-index now. There it goes. Okay, so it re-indexed our five items. So if we go back to the site, we can see, uh, I tip my hat, so the search is already there. So it already knows. Uh, let's go find another random piece of content though that wasn't there before. So I know Ordre wasn't there, but uh, let's do Lansma, that should work. Okay, I guess that means throwing or something anyway. So you can search, and then we're searching on the text, and the text, you know, gets a hit, and it and it directs you to the correct page. So you can index all that content. If you wanted to index it to the book itself, then you could just like double that up. You could just keep going through and kind of like inception nest those relationships, and you could bubble it up. Um, but right now, this I think proves the point of showing it on the book there or on the page. Uh, let's see. All right. I got 20 minutes left. I want to go fast, but I want to give time for questions in case anyone has them. So uh, I guess I'll show you real quick some of the snazzy um, settings you can do for the viewer. And then after that, I'll just very quickly show you um, the revisioning, um, although that's likely something that you just kind of like set once and, and, and forget here. Um, not as exciting as some of the, the nice uh, the nice looking Open Sea Dragon configuration here. Um, so if you want to configure how your Sea Dragon looks, um, here we'll go to the page here. Excuse me, to the book. Uh, if you want to configure how this Open Sea Dragon viewer looks, you can go here, and we have configuration media, and then there's if the drop down will go, Open Sea Dragon settings. So we've got this kind of big form here. Um, you got to set it, like where's your cantaloupe? Here is where you tell it what view you use to generate the manifest. I kind of hinted at that earlier. Um, bit of a deep dive for just this demo, but it is there. Um, but if we keep going down here, kind of all the way down to the bottom, you see we've got sequence mode, which is the default if multiple images are detected in the manifest, or you've got this collection mode, which kind of arranges them in a grid or in a line. Um, so I'll show you first, a very nice thing here is just the reference strip. Save that. Uh, and unfortunately, when you make these changes, they're not automatically propagated because like I said, it, it very aggressively caches itself. Um, so what you have to do is you just gotta go clear the cache real quick and then you can see the changes. So here it's under development performance. I can say clear the cache. I'm trying to do this all through the UI so you guys aren't abruptly brought into a terminal. Um, 
which I am comfortable with, but most of you will probably be doing it this way. So this takes a second for it to do its thing here, but it's it's eliminating the cache. And then when that happens, our OpenCDragon viewer will be rendered with this little reference strip on it, which is pretty nice. So if you go back to the site, give it time, here it goes. So now you can see we've got this uh, kind of film strip here that we can use to navigate. And you can control where it's placed and how tall it is and the size of the images and how many and whatnot. Um, so you can see it drops back down to your mouse over it, which is pretty snazzy. Um, I think it's pretty helpful when you're doing this kind of page at a time thing, um, which is good for performance because you're only loading a page at a time. You're not trying to load 300 pages at once, which can be catastrophic for a system. Um, but when you do that, you don't necessarily know where you are in the sequence of things. And so I find this to be a nice a nice setting to set. The, the other one here we'll do real fast um, is we'll just set it to that collection mode. Do, 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 do. Where am I? Media, open C Dragon. All the way to the bottom here. So I'm going to undo that. And a thing to notice here, when you enable collection mode, it's going to gray out sequence mode. Um, you can have one or the other. Uh, that's it. So here we're going to do collection mode. Um, and we're just going to stick with the defaults, which is going to put them all on a line. So we're just going to save the configuration. And then I got to go clear the cache again, unfortunately. So we'll do that. Do 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 its thing here. Uh, let it go. It just rebuilt it. It's having a hard time getting back up and doing it again. It's not happy with me. There it goes. All right. So we go back to the site. Should get us there. Here we go. Okay. So now, ah, okay. We have four. So now it's actually putting it in a grid, which is pretty cool. So you can align the pages like this. You can tell it to do rows or columns. You can set it up in a strip going one way or the other. But this this lets you kind of see everything at once, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it's just a nice way to present. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice showy feature that people really seem to like and get into. It's something that, that I guess has a lot of wow factor when you're zooming in and stuff like that. Um, but I think this is a nice. Uh, another nice way to arrange and display your content if you're looking for it. Um, okay, so I guess real quick then, because I want to leave time, I wanted to show the IIIF manifest view. Let me just very quickly show you the manifest for something. We won't go edit the view. That's probably a bit too much. Um, but here, if you look at any page, uh, what happens is this is a view that runs. And um, what Joe made is that instead of like styling the output as like an HTML list or let you pick like, oh, I want all of these to see them in teaser mode and stuff like that. Um, instead, what it does is it spits out this manifest for you. So you can see here, um, you have an ID that's essentially where you got the manifest. Um, we do conform to the IIIF standard for uh, the presentation API. And if you go in here into sequences, you get these canvases and each image is um, in these canvases. So you have canvas zero, that's one. Canvas one, that's the next page. So you have all four of the pages here. And it contains all of their information. So we're not um, using this for anything but just getting the list of images. But eventually, what we can do is we can put you know, book and page level metadata within the manifest. And then we have the option of, of potentially displaying that information to the user like in an overlay over the viewer. Um, so that's kind of a nice next step for us. Um, first step was just to make it working with manifests. And then after that, we can we can do more. I believe the Mirador viewer um, with the PR that we have right now, if you do have some metadata in there, um, I believe it will like know what to do with it and, and can actually render it for you. Um, so that's something nice to look forward to. Um, all right, so then let's just go talk about revisioning. Um, I have already done this here, but let's go to the form itself. So if I were to go edit and save this, it's going to make 
a new version. And it does that because this, this tick box right here is checked, this create new revision. And so you can go into like the form settings and you can set the default. So by default, you can have it like be unchecked and then it won't make a new revision. Um, but we assume you probably want this feature, so we leave it checked like that. It's just good for safety in general, in case you make a mistake, um, to, to leave it there. So as long as that is, is checked off, which it is by default, um, then every time you save, you're gonna make a new revision. And you can look at the revisions here. You actually have a tab. Um, so you can go see, it's gonna tell you which one is the current revision. Um, and you can see previous ones. So here's what we did before. And it was uh, just one item was what I had in the extent. And then when you go visit the current revision, you'll see uh, here, I said it's one book, three pages. Well, that's wrong. So let's go edit that. So if we go edit it, I'm gonna go to its extent here, which is somewhere down there. I'm gonna say it's four pages and then we're gonna save. Okay, so if we go to the revisions here, now we can see we've got three revisions. Um, so let's go check these out in Fedora. So if you go down here, we always have the Fedora URI kind of available as a link, um, and you can control whether or not that, that shows up if you wanna hide it, but we find it useful, so we, we keep it here. So we can go back to the book. You can see here, it's DC Terms Extent, one book, four pages. All right, and if you scroll down here, here you can see in versions, you can say view versions, and you can see that we've got the historic versions here. Now there's a subtle difference between the way Fedora and Drupal works. So you notice there was three revisions in Drupal, but there's only two in Fedora, and that's because uh, in Drupal, the current version is a revision. And in Fedora, the latest version that you have, like where it's at, is it's kind of indeterminate, right? Like you're allowed to make as many changes as you want and then you gotta say, okay, now this is this is a version. So it's kind of a, um, they don't exactly uh, treat them the same way, but we can make everything line up. So the third revision in Drupal is this that you're seeing right here in, in Fedora. And then these, these two here are, are the older versions. So if we go back here, we can say it's three pages and then if you wanna go back even even further to the first one, you can see I just said it was it was one item. Um, and it gives you a little warning here. It says this is a historic version, you can't mess with it, um, but you can delete it if you want. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that though. Um, but that's, that's how it works. It also, uh, Drupal has the ability to do revisions with media. So those files that you upload can also get well, the files themselves not, but the metadata around them can also be revisioned. But unfortunately, with media, Drupal doesn't really have a good interface for that. Let's see. Oh, okay. I was just spoken. So that was in Drupal 8.7, and this is 8.8. .8. So we do actually have um, revisions for that. Am I on the right page? I am not. That's why it showed up. I lied. Here we go. So let's go to a page. Okay, I didn't lie. So it's got that. That's a nice new feature. So when we first developed this, it didn't have this. Um, and we just recently updated to Drupal 8.8 for our testing sprint. So we ship with the latest version. So that's a, that's a nice bonus surprise. Uh, even I didn't know that. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of revisioning and page content. We didn't get into, into more. You can certainly do more. You can kind of take the knowledge I just showed you when it comes to like setting up pages with children and their weights. Um, and you could, you know, extend that and pretty easily do something like make, you know, a postcard type object where it's just got two children, you know, the first child is the front, the second child is the back, or something like that. Um, so there's more kind of complicated or um, complex uh, object modeling that you can do, but we kind of started here with this base 
of what do we do with pages or newspapers because that's the common use case and then this can be you know over time adapted and worked uh, in order to support you know other types it really comes down to adding those other tags and then creating rules around them like what derivatives you want etc and stuff like that um, but this is essentially the basis for all this uh, it is still a starting point so we do have a lot of room for improvement and uh, definitely more features to add as time goes on um, but this is kind of the state of where we're at now and what's going to be included in the 1.1.0 release that's that's coming soon um, so I will back away from my soapbox here for a second and just pause. Unfortunately, we only have 10 minutes left, so I ran a little long. Um, but are there any questions that, that anyone has? That's okay. We'll, we'll go through all the questions we have, and if folks have to leave, we are recording this and we'll post it later. So we'll, uh, um, although the first note is just from the, uh, from the chat that uh, I think you are still looking at a node revisions tab here, so there may not be a UI for media yet. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. you. You caught that before I did. Oh, uh, it's uh, credit to credit to the chat. Um, so I'll go through the questions in the order they're put in here. Uh, first up is, what would happen to pages sharing sharing the same uh, co index, so the same order and number? Um, you will basically get whatever Drupal decides. I think a lot of that comes down to the order in which you ingested them, it will probably just take the one you ingested first and assume that's always the winner between the two. Um, that's that's a safeguard we haven't added yet. So the best I can do right now is like slap your hand and say, don't do that. Um, but that's definitely an improvement that we weren't thinking about here to kind of um, stop someone from doing the wrong thing. So I, I think you'll always get them in the order in which you ingested them if they share if they share an order. Now, if you go through that reordering page then and go uh, mush stuff around and hit save, it'll it'll fix that for you. Okay, uh, next up, uh, what are the options for bulk ingest of page content? Good, I'm glad you asked that question. So I preloaded this because, you know, our current workflow, it's got some steps. There's a few clicks there to do. Um, and you probably wouldn't want to do this process over and over again for like a hundred page book, right? Um, that would be really rough. So the, the options that you have um, right now, we don't have anything as nice as you can put them in a zip in this certain format and upload it and they'll be there. Um, but you can take our existing migration tools and sort of adapt them. Um, what we have right now is a lot of stuff around using CSVs in order to ingest things. And uh, Mini, well, and I always butcher her name because I cannot roll my arms. Um, Mini Granel. Um, ooh, I know that was bad. Apologies, Mini. Um, she did a lot of groundbreaking work to kind of get us to this point for the work on, on Laddie. Uh, and what she developed was essentially a spreadsheet ingest um, and that was all custom but you can just take what we have now for the migrate islandora csv and just assume every row like is a page and you can slurp up everything that way so you got a little bit of legwork to do if you want to ingest a, a huge book um, but you can very easily do that using our existing tools for working with spreadsheets if you can um, easily model your metadata in that way? And the answer to that is probably probably yes, um, unless you have some really um, complicated kind of nested hierarchical data that's not already in uh, an XML data stream. But that's what I would suggest to use for now. And then hopefully, like fingers crossed, um, we'll have the desktop um, ingest your tool done soon. And that would be um, your second option. But that's that's a ways down the road. Uh, next question is, will there be any other viewers available soon, like Internet Archive Book Reader? Um, so the Mirador viewer is probably going to be the next one uh, to go. We've got a PR in for it already. It's just got a couple things that are kind of baked in with some kind of hard-coded assumptions that need, that need to get teased out. Um, but after that, we are, I personally have no qualms or objections to any particular viewer. Um, 
So I'm I'm certainly open to to any of them. I have no real preference or understanding of what which one is better for whom. I think it all kind of depends on your use case. Um, but if folks want it um, and they ask for it, we can certainly do a sprint around it. Or if someone has has done it and is willing to contribute contribute it, we'll certainly accept it. I imagine IABV would be pretty high on the list of of viewers to come next. Uh, next question. When you search for long small, the result was a full page. Is there a way to see long small highlighted in the page? There is. I, I haven't gone through all the steps and I didn't feel confident enough to, to try it in this demo. So there is a lot of built in um, support in Drupal for like hit highlighting and having that get presented. Um, but I personally need to go play with that more to get it working correctly. There's some weird, I don't want to say, it's just Drupalisms around it that I haven't sorted out yet. So um, right now, if I tried to do that, everything would probably explode and it would white screen and I would embarrass myself. Um, but I, I know it is possible and that's something to kind of look out for in the future. Once we figure out how to really do that right, we're going we're gonna to advertise that to everyone. Next question is, will OpenSea dragging and this indexing of edited text slash OCR work with already OCR PDF files? Yes. Yes, absolutely. If you've already OCR'd it, so, you know, I just uploaded the file and then I let the system do its thing and generate all that for me. If you already have it, you can tell the system not to try to generate OCR. And as long as you can take the contents of that file and put it in a field somewhere, which if when you upload that file, you say, hey, this is an extracted text file, it will do automatically for you. Um, as long as you can get that content into a field, then it's solar indexable, and then you can, you can search for it and find your way. Next question, and apologies if I've skipped any questions here because I'm skimming over some to back and forth chat, um, but is, can you have children of children? Yes. Yes, it can go as deep as you want. Um, and we, we don't make any um, restrictions around that. Um, so you can, you can nest to your heart's content. The, the idea would be that you would take, um, you would have a page content. If you were to do something, you know, you could take the same concept and just keep bubbling it up. So we would have, you know, journals and then journals would have a sequence of issues and then the issues would have a sequence of page content. And then those would have a sequence of pages and you can just kind of keep going as, as much as you want. Um, uh, Open Sea Dragon provides a nice interface for image-based complex objects, but have we thought about how non-image-based complex objects we rendered at the parent level? We haven't given a lot of thought to that yet. I mean, that's a tricky question, and I think it kind of comes down to just what the particulars of what you're of what you're trying to model. Um, so this is very triple IF base, um, et cetera. If you had something like, I'm trying to think of something where this would happen. Um, let's say you had a really huge video or something like that, and it had to get sliced up into like four smaller clips or something like that. Um, we don't have anything for it natively now other than just like it could be like here's links to all four of these clips like have fun um and we would be on the hook to find some way to adapt that to like create a playlist and play that in the video player or, or something like that so we're aware of these situations but we haven't had the use cases pop up yet for us to really dig deeper but that's certainly something worth um, worth exploring. And if you do have that use case, please feel free to open an issue in the issue queue so we can we can have that on file. Uh, next question is, uh, can OpenSea Dragon handle the viewing of PDFs or is it just for image files? My understanding is that it's just for image files. I haven't tried it. We do have a PDF viewer already. So if your book is already wrapped up in a PDF, um, you can just feed it that. And the same microservice that does OCR, it's also smart enough 
to detect that you fed it a PDF and it will run PDF to text instead. And so it will extract the, the text that way. So if you have text-based PDFs, um, you're already good to go. You don't have to do every individual page to set up kind of the hierarchy the same way. Um, and you can still get a uh, still get a viewer and get all the text out of it, and be able to hit search hits. Uh, what happens when you upload more than one TIFF or file to the same book page? Uh, what gets indexed or parsed? Yeah, that's that's a very good question. So we've got some uh, some improvements around content modeling that we've been kicking around. There's a Google Doc that I and, and Rosie Lefebvre and a few others have been have been working on. And this has all kind of come out of um, the need to have exactly that ability when working with like research data and stuff like that. Um, so this is another one of those scenarios where the best I can do right now is just slap your hand and say, don't do that. Um, but very soon, um, we will be exploring the ability to handle multiple quote unquote original files or multiple uploads within a single object. So if you are in a situation where you don't really care about like page level metadata and stuff like that, you don't need anything. You just know that you have this thing and all the description goes into like the top level parent object, then in the future, not, not right now, I wouldn't suggest doing it, uh, you will get indeterminate behavior. Um, in the future, you will be able to just say, okay, here, I just want to upload all of these original files, and then I can put the weight on the media itself, and I can order the, the pages that way, um, and then you can, you can do that. So there will soon be the ability to cut out some of the overhead when constructing these complicated objects. But for right now, um, I think it's going to do the same thing. We kind of assume that there's just one original file in like two or three spots in the code. And so you're always just going to get the one that you, you uploaded first. Um, that's the last question I see in the chat, unless there's one I missed or if anyone has something else they'd like to ask. That looks like a no. So I guess we're all done here. I will, will take this recording and post it to YouTube and send a link out to you all afterwards. Uh, but thank you very much everyone for joining us and thank you Danny for a, a great demo and introduction. No, thank you. Thanks everyone for showing up.